Healthy emotional intimacy remembers that it is you and your partner against the problem, not you and your partner against one another. Conflict is part of the journey. Pretending to be there by someone's side during this journey of life means making a commitment to be for them through it all, not just by standing by their sides during the sunny days because anyone can do that, but also holding the umbrella over them during the rainy days. The rainy days are the days to test your true friendship with whosoever you're with that you call your lover or your man. How can you expect emotional intimacy to keep burning if you don't check on it regularly? If you don't see what needs to be done and what needs to be provided for it to burn? I think a lot of people make the mistake of thinking that entering into a committed relationship is when the work ends. Hey guys, welcome to my channel. Oh my God. <laughs> I can't believe that we're just starting the year in the month of March on this channel. Honestly, I had a very busy January and February fasting and moving places, but I'm still not settled. And I decided not to wait until I settle fully to kickstart the channel. Anyways, I am back fully and let's get started. Okay. I miss you all. And I can't wait to communicate with every one of you. Now on today's episode of Juiciness 2024, I will start by showing you how to know that you've achieved deep emotional intimacy with your man. Of course, we all know what physical intimacy looks like. It's the most obvious, direct and primal showing of attraction. It's passionate and intense. I mean, physical intimacy is a projection of emotional intimacy. Sure, we can share experience with others that are strictly physical and don't have emotional components. But if we're seeking a deeper connection with someone, and I mean a connection that lasts longer and it's more fulfilling and carries more depth, just know that the physical projection is also going to be different. Now, these are the ways that emotional intimacy presents itself through physical action that are less theatrical. You're less obvious in sexual. Number one, you feel at peace in their presence. Ladies, listen, I know we talk a lot about passion in relationship, but what we don't talk about quite enough is peace. You can have great chemistry, intense sex and passion, but if outside of that, your connection don't bring you peace, then your emotional intimacy isn't that deep enough or complete. Do you get what I'm saying? Now, let me say that in a more direct way. The time that you spend having sex with your partner is infinitesimally small next to the time that you spend hanging around with them. The question is, what then is even more important than the physical spicy time? It's the time that you're just existing together. It is the time that you're on the couch watching a movie or cuddling in bed or sharing a Saturday morning coffee. Mm -hmm. It is the quiet dinner time. It is a glass of wine by the balcony. It is the treats you take to grocery stores. It is the waiting room at the doctor's office, watching the kids playing around the backyard all together. These are the moments where peace is found, comfort, certainty, calmness. See, the more time that you spend together, the more important this feeling becomes. Because quite frankly, I think that as we grow into older age together as couples, the time spent being physically intimate with one another or with your partner may at some point become less frequent, thereby making that non-physical time even much more important. It is one thing to feel love or lust for your partner, but it's a whole other thing to like them. If you can feel at ease, at peace, simply existing in your presence without even having to do much. This is a physical and positive sign that you've built a strong connection that needs no word or action in order to be understood. Number two, you and your partner, you and your man have deep emotional intimacy when you both genuinely desire to understand each other. Now, let's be honest, ladies. Understanding another person isn't always easy. Even understanding ourselves isn't always easy. What is easy is throwing your hands up in the air and telling someone that you're confusing or that they don't make any sense or that you're just too different from each other to make this relationship work. See, a real emotional connection I mean, true emotional intimacy 
doesn't take the easy way out. It really, genuinely, and truly wants to understand. It opens the mind. It drops judgment and puts its own preconceived ideas or notion off the side, off the table. Are you getting me? Now, I need you to know that our past, our upbringings, our morals, our values all serve as a lens in our lives. And oftentimes we see the world and other people through this lens that has been shaped by the life that we've lived up until this point. So it's very likely that the person that you fall in love with is going to have a different lens than you. That means their fundamental reality is going to be different than yours. I want you, I want you to think about that for a second. And maybe you would have a change of your perception when it comes to your relationship. Now, ladies, you've got to realize that every single person that you've ever met is going to be experiencing a different reality than you are. It's a, it is strange, but it's salient. It's a salient thought. No two people live the same life. No two people share the same experiences in the same ways. Even when they do share the same experiences, they see it and they feel it differently based on their neurological and biological realities. So when you're working on combining your life with someone else's to build a life together, right, as a couple, it will require you to open your mind to the ways of thinking and find the best way to intertwine your two worlds together in order to have harmony. Now, needless to say that you both need to come to the table with an equal amount of willingness to do this, or one person will feel overlooked or undervalued and overrun. Do you get what I mean? So true intimacy seeks to understand another person. It invariably values, you know, it respects and recognizes their viewpoints and values and wants to learn from them. Number three, you know that you have so much deep emotional connection with your man or with your woman when you reveal your deepest secrets, your desires, your fears, and your thoughts to one another. You need to understand that the nature of intimacy is connection. And connection can only be built through open and honest communication. So understanding each other requires the acceptance of your partner, but also you know, being open, sharing yourselves. It's the divulging of thoughts, feelings, fantasies, insecurities, fears, and even secrets that are reserved for perhaps only this person in your life. All right. Now, it's obvious that a deep and sudden sense of trust is required in order to do this. I would never in this world suggest that you just run around pouring your heart out to every person that holds a hand out or whispers sweet nothing into your ears. That's a surefire way to get hurt and taken advantage of. Don't do that. All right. And during this process of vulnerability, you will see and feel your partner's authenticity. Or the lack thereof. You would see it brought to the table. You will see it in their face, in their actions. You would hear it in your voice. You will know deep down if they're truly receiving you just as you are, or if what they're hearing is creating a distance between you and them. You will know if they are sharing with you on the same level that you're sharing with them. So you have to read between the lines. And if they are, that's the space in which trust will be formed because the more trust you build the safer you will feel sharing these deep truths with them because as a matter of fact i would like to say that you know the lack of emotional intimacy has no desire to get this deep with anyone you would just want to learn things on the surface level you would just want to learn the surface level desires of each other and feel perfectly content in feeling them and that's okay but if you want something that would last forever you need to go as deep as both of you can. My point is this, if you just scratch the surface level of communication in your relationship, your relationship will only last that long. It will be shallow, it will be equally as short. So to go deep emotionally, you will have to drive a stake down into the ground between you that is much stronger and more resilient, all right? And as a result, your relationship will be empowered to last proportionately as long because the foundation will be more solid and more deeply rooted. Number four, you are both honest about your compatibility. 
Now, here's the truth of the matter, ladies, that would actually surprise you to hear me say, love is never enough. Love is not all that you need. That's right. I said it. Love is not enough to make a relationship work in the long term. You must have mutual respect, compatibility, forgiveness, compromise, um, shared values, sexual needs, social belief system, worldviews. You've got to have same vision of the future. It is entirely possible that you can have two good people that aren't right for each other. Mm -hmm. And being emotionally intimate doesn't mean turning a blind eye to the realities of life and just hoping things are going to change or work out because you love or you like each other. It doesn't just work that way. You've got to be honest about the realities of what it takes to build a full and rich life together. You've got to come together as a team and look through clear eyes at what life is going to demand of you. And you need to make a conscious decision to take on the challenges now, if you think I am dragging the romance out of intimacy by saying this, I would argue that it's actually the exact opposite. I believe that it enhances intimacy when you make the conscious decision to be with someone and to make things work. It is a choice, an emotional and logical undertaking that you are entering into with your partner with deliberate intention. For that reason, you will find ways to make it work. It's not shallow. You've made commitments and you will do whatever it takes to honor that commitment. So if it's based solely on feelings or emotions, it becomes flimsy when that feeling dies out, when that feeling just goes away, all right? You'll feel uncertain. You'll feel doubtful and curious about what and who else might be better suited for you. Now listen when I tell you that the logical and pragmatic analyzing of your compatibility actually serves to strengthen your bond because it is a bond that you both have chosen since you know it is right for you, okay? Number five, without waste of time, when you take part in what's important to each other, then you know that your emotional connection between you and your man is deep and solid. The point is this, you don't have to share the same interests with your man to partake in them. You do it because your man loves them and you love your man. You want to see them happy. You want to be part of their happiness. It makes you happy to see them in your zone. And of course, they do it for you in return. Now, here's the key. You have to be genuine about it. You can't drag your feet, you know, complaining the whole time, asking when it's going to be over or when you're going to leave. Because by so doing, you're taking what might be the one thing that they really love or that they really enjoy and you're just covering it, you know, with a dark cloud, ultimately tainting that experience for them. So if your partner has a hobby or a space that is solely theirs and they invite you into it, this is a showing of love and intimacy that is reserved specifically for you. They are giving you the honor of bringing you into their world, which is never something that should be taken for granted. It also means that they should appreciate and value the magnitude of the same honor when you invite them into your world as well. Okay, because it's a two-way street. Number six, when you have built emotional connection as deep as the ocean with your man, you will leave space for the relationship to breathe and grow into. Also, now would be a good time to give a reminder that not everything in a relationship needs to be shared or intertwined. For some, time to recharge and do your own thing is key. We all need independence. We all need freedom. We all need our space. We all need to stay connected to our true selves, no matter how close we are um, with one another or no matter how close we are with our partners. I believe this is where a lot of people get stuck over the years. They immense themselves so deeply into their relationship that they lose their own identity. They forget who they truly are before. All right. And they have no idea who they would like to be. And now in no way am I saying that you should have one foot out of the relationship just in case. But what I'm saying is that two people are happier, healthier, and can show up for each other more fully if they maintain their individuality. So never you lose your independence or your individuality. There must be a balance. It doesn't matter what your thing is. It just matters that you have the freedom and the independence to maintain it. That's your recharge time. Everything and everyone needs to be recharged sometimes, or it will just run out of battery and do nobody any good. Now, of course, whatever your thing is, 
it must be appropriate within the boundaries of your relationship. We should go without saying, you know, obviously mutual respect is key. Never betray the trust that you've been working so hard to build by engaging or compromising in certain things. So having space for the relationship to grow into is also key because I believe that holding on to something too tightly only will suffocate it. You know this, and you've got to know this in no peace. Number seven, deep emotional connection means deep friendship. So if you're friends with each other, then being lovers, then that's a connection that will be solid for a very long time. I'm sure some of you would say, oh, please, Jane, I thought we were talking about intimacy. Look, the happiest intimate relationships are built on the foundation of friendship. Are you hearing me? Now, don't get this confused with being put into the friend zone. That's uh, catastrophic. It will make you feel unwanted and unlovable. That's not what I'm talking about here. What I'm talking about is building a connection between you that transcends the primal and romantic and sexual um, phase. I'm talking about just liking each other because that's what carries you through the years. So just being friends, having conversations with friends, gossiping with your friend, taking trips to the store together, laughing together, bathing together, being silly and being playful together, just existing in each other's presence is very, very key in a relationship. If you don't have that, if all that you have is just sexual, then it's not deep enough. Life as we established in, a point, in point one, in my point one is sometimes just about doing menial everyday tasks together. So if your entire relationship is based on the foundation of sexual attraction for example then you might just dread sharing the normal experiences of life with this person and that's not encompassing so think about spending time with your best friend though you enjoy doing everything with them as long as you are together you can be your fullest self with them because they know everything about you and still love you you trust them they trust you you don't have to put up an act for them and if you did put up an act they would know it all right, so we should absolutely want, I dare say, need that same, that same level of um, friendship and connection with our intimate partners. Because true emotional intimacy doesn't always need to be intimate to prove itself. It's just there and you both know it. Do you get what I mean? Now, number eight, if you have, you know, more non-sexual touch, on the contrary, it's also grounds for building a more intense emotional connection. Let me just kickstart things by saying that physical intimacy is obvious to see, you know, kissing as well as having sex and touching and all of that stuff. Emotional intimacy is you wanting to be close to your partner just to feel their warmth and presence without having to make, take it to the sexual part of it or the sexual phase of it. It's a hand on the leg during a car ride. It's the intertwined arms walking through the park. It's a tight hog at the end of the long day. It's the leg on the couch watching a movie together. Now, of course, not everyone is physically expressive. We all communicate our affections and love in different ways, but that does not negate the human need for touch. You know, there is an inherent desire to be close to the person that we care about. And you know what? Um, I mean, emotional intimacy enhances that desire. The physical connection that I am talking about here is not for the purpose of initiating a sexual encounter, but instead it's for the purpose of communicating the intimacy, the desire for closeness, the emotional connection that says, I want you, I want to be up against you. That's what I'm talking about. Now, number nine, when you avoid doing things that bother each other, then you know how important your emotional connection is to both of you for you not to jeopardize it. Obviously, an important part of expressing love is doing things that make your partner feel safe, secure, and happy. Another important part is not doing things that make them unhappy or feel insecure. By now, you must have learned enough to know about your partner, to know what makes them feel insecure, what they disapprove of, or maybe even what they consider as cheating. I get it that there is no predicting what this could be um, for your man, but that's why they are a special person and a unique person that you have the honor of loving. Now, the point is this, right? 
Emotional intimacy is responsible for its own health and happiness. It must be maintained by those who enjoy it. And that means not doing anything to damage it. So if your partner is uncomfortable with some of the people that you are hanging out with or that you follow on social media or your habit of mindlessly liking their photos or the way you interact with other people in public, then you need to change it. You need to change your action, even if you don't personally see anything wrong with them. So you could start by asking yourself what you would gain by perpetuating the action that you developed when, you're, when you were single. Why are you holding on to them even though you know they bother your man? Is it ego? Resistance to change? Feeling like you're sacrificing part of your life for another person? See, the odds are you're not really losing anything by changing these things, but you may lose a person that you love by not changing them. Now, let's discuss the caveat here. You should never, ever change who you fundamentally are for someone else. You should never sacrifice your values. You should never change your belief system. You should never compromise your moral code, all right? You must create and maintain your identity above all else. Because betraying yourself will always lead to resentment and further anguish down the lane. And you don't want that. So the seizing of actions that bother your partner is not the same thing as changing who you are. At least it shouldn't be. They can love you but not love certain things that you do. So you have to change those things. Think of it as respect. Is the action that you're about to take respectful or disrespectful to your partner's wants and needs? You, you need to put your partner's needs in consideration at the forefront, all right? So the answer to that question should dictate what next you should do or what you shouldn't do. Number 10, you're each other's go-to for good and the bad. Who's the first person that you call when you win or you even lose? Who's the first person that you, you know, call when things go wrong? Who can you count on to be your support system or your cheerleader to be there in a stand rooting for you or they're on the sidelines waiting to comfort you? See, life is always going to be full of ups and downs, victories and defeats, landing huge deals and losing even bigger ones. So pledging to be there by someone's side during this journey of life means making a commitment to be for them through it all, not just by standing by their sides during the sunny days because anyone can do that, but also holding the umbrella over them during the rainy days. The rainy days are the days to test your true friendship with whosoever you're with that you call your lover or your man. So imagine being with someone who distances themselves from you every time you face a struggle or a challenge. You quickly will begin to doubt their intentions and start to create emotional distance in order to protect yourself. So when you know they are always going to be there and when you are certain about providing them with the same assurance and security, it's only going to serve to strengthen your bond. And ultimately, it shows that their love is for you, not for what you do, what you make, or what you achieve, just for you. Number 11, your emotional commitment is deep when your disagreements are calm and productive at the end of the day. I mean, what's better, avoiding conflict or solving conflicts? Of course, by now, you and I both damn well know <laughs> that the two go hand in hand, right? Because the truth is that when passion and emotions run high, when two people's lives are, you know, combined together, when big life decisions are being made, conflict is part of the journey. And hell no, it shouldn't be frequent. No, it shouldn't be hurtful. No, it should never, ever be abusive. But that's not denying the fact that conflict, however, does exist in any relationship, whether it's a perfect soulmate kind of relationship or not, it, it's always there. You're going to disagree to agree. It's just part of the ride. The question then is not if a disagreement happens, but how it happens. Do you stay focused on the actual issue at hand and pragmatically work through it together? Or do your emotions flare? and you start pulling grievances from the past, insulting each other and saying hurtful things. The gospel truth is that emotional intimacy builds on healthy communication style over time. It becomes used to expressing thoughts and ideas with each other and working through challenges. It keeps the main thing the main thing. And this means that you both are willing 
and able to clearly communicate your challenges in a calm and productive way. You both are willing to hear and listen to your challenges without judgment and overreaction. In other words, healthy emotional intimacy remembers that it is you and your partner against the problem, not you and your partner against one another, okay? Number 12, you check in with each other. All right, you check in with each other consistently. Emotional intimacy doesn't just work forever on its own. The health of your emotional intimacy must be maintained with the same, you know, attention and love as your personal health. Think of it as starting a fire on a cold harmattan, or you guys call it winter night. That fire must be tended to. It must be paid attention to. If you walk out of the room for too long, eventually it will burn out. If however you check on it consistently and add what needs to be added to it, it will literally burn for as long as you choose for it to burn. So how can you expect emotional intimacy to keep burning if you don't check on it regularly? If you don't see what needs to be done and what needs to be provided for it to burn? I think a lot of people make the mistake of thinking that entering into a committed relationship is when the work ends. Because entering into a relationship is when the real effort must begin. The effort of showing this person that you're willing to put in the work for the entirety of the relationship, even if that's whatever. And that's where most people are so lazy to put in the work. The effort of checking in to see what they need, to take honest and clear inventory of the relationship. How are things going with you? What do you need more of? What do you need less of? What's working? What's not working? What needs are being filled? Which aren't? Listen, if you took just a few minutes every week to check in with each other in a space that is free of judgment, free of emotional overreaction, free of excuses, just imagine how much you could enhance the health and the well-being of your relationship. See, two people will only make that commitment to each other and to themselves if true emotional intimacy is present. Do you get what I mean? Now, number 13, you keep the sexual spark and the romance alive. All right? All right. Uh, you know, we have to mention it eventually. We all know that sexual energy and attraction is strong between two people who have built a healthy and stable emotional connection, right? Uh, we have, after all, addressed that physical intimacy is a projection of emotional intimacy. So when you feel this deep sense of love, safety, or attraction and trust with a person, you want to be physically intimate with them. That is just an experience you don't share with anyone else, created by a connection that you don't share with anyone else. Now, the desire to keep the spark alive, to find new and creative ways to express yourself, to make sure that the obligation of life don't get in the way of things, to express and indulge in um, consensual fantasies, to have the clear understanding that being another person's only monogamous sexual partner for the rest of your life is in some ways a responsibility. It's a responsibility to them and a responsibility to yourself. To honor that commitment, to stay faithful, to only have your needs met with them or by them, to make sure that their needs are met by you is a big deal. And honestly, only strong and healthy emotional intimacy will happily and willfully be up to that challenge. Not every relationship will be up to that. Now, number 14, you know you have deep emotional connection between you and your man when his happiness becomes just as important as your own happiness and vice versa. Now, emotional, intim now, emotional intimacy is more than intertwining of your lives, all right? It is the intertwining of your emotions. This means that you share in your happiness and you share in your strength to heal your pain. It means that you're happy seeing them happy and you feel the sadness as well when they're not happy. Your emotions are tied together, which drives your actions and your desires to support their happiness. Notice I didn't say to make them happy because I would always believe that true happiness comes from within. No amount of external validation or, uh, or, compliment, or, or compliments or even love can create happiness in a person who can do it for themselves. 
So you must have happiness for yourself. Number 15, you show up as your truest and most authentic self. And this is so important. What is intimacy if not the space to be yourself, to feel safe, trusting, trusted, authentic, vulnerable, you know, believing in the very core of it all. It's the building of the same level of comfort alongside of another person that you have with yourself. And without my love, this is how we know that you have found an emotional, not just an emotional, a deep emotional connection with your man. Now don't forget to like, share, subscribe, stay tuned and know that I... <laughs>